NC State Wolfpack shaped not only my love for sports, but my love for basketball especially. The 1983 men's basketball team led by coach Jim Valvano served as a beacon of hope that every day in every walk of life, ordinary people could accomplish extraordinary things. That Cinderella story seems to be repeating itself today in the best way with the current men's Wolfpack basketball team. Joining me today, I am so honored to have one of the stars of that 1983 national championship team, guard Derek Wittenberg. Hey, Derek. Hey. Oh my Special goodness. Special time of the year. It's March Madness. It <laughs> is. Survive in advance. <laughs> Survive in advance is right. Oh my goodness. Now the current team had to win five games, five days in a row to win the ACC tournament to make the dance. And your team was in a similar situation back in 1983. Are you feeling some deja vu? Oh, big time deja vu. But winning five games in five days is, is tremendous. I mean, wow. Kudos to our current team. Unbelievable job by Coach Keats and his staff. And this, these kids showed a lot of resilience and heart and determination and going into it. And, uh, and nobody gave them a chance. I've been there before. Nobody gave them a chance. And they just, uh, one game at a time, pulled off one of the, the biggest runs in ACC history. I mean, I, I think it's more NCAA history. They're only the second team to ever do five games in five days, right? Absolutely. And uh, uh, that's what makes it even special to get in that. The one thing you want to experience going to college as a, a basketball player at this level is getting into the NCAA tournament. Then the ultimate is to win the whole thing. But right. it's still not many get the opportunity to go in the NCAA championship uh, tournament. And it's, it's just a special time in their life. And I, I'm glad they're enjoying it. It is. And you can tell that they have so much heart. Now, I wasn't alive to see you and the Cardiac Pack win that championship in 83, but I would have to imagine that it feels exactly like I felt watching this current team playing through the ACC tournament. What similarities do you see between your team in 83 and the current Wolf Pack team? Well, uh, nobody think you sh should be here. And, and number two, uh, I think they showed uh, that uh, great heart and determination and resolve by getting to this point. And, and listen, still today, right now, nobody thinks that they're going to go any further than they're going. And so they, they got nothing to lose. And so yep. they could just play freely and be themselves. And uh, that's kind of similar to where we were. Right. That, uh, we just, but the difference is, is that Jim Valvano from day one talked about winning the national championship. He yes. talked about it. Oh, and yeah. uh, and and we believed it, and that was our ultimate goal. And now, in their sights, uh, they have an opportunity. Right. If they win five games in a row, they can do five more games in a row again. So uh, everything's possible. It's one game at a time. Um, there's no great teams in this tournament. Everybody can be beaten in this tournament, and everybody has been beaten in this tournament. So there's no undefeated teams, and so. Hey, it's uh, it's about matchups and 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 taking it one game at a time. And your focus now is Texas Tech, and you, so you can win and move on. Yep. Now you brought up someone very special. Let's take it back to when you were in college. How did it How did it feel to play for Coach B? Oh, I, I can tell you, uh, he he just was uh, so passionate about life. And he cared about people and, and you could feel it, right? It was more than a coaches and player relationship. It was, it was more like, like today they talk about culture, but back then we talked about family. Yes. And culture seems to be me more of a corporate phrase. Uh, back then in the day, we had a family phrase. We feel like we cared about each other. Uh, it was more than just basketball. It was off the court. And our bond was very strong. And that's because of our leader, because of our coach right. and what he thought about us and how he felt about us, because he, he thought about us uh, as much as a, as a person and a student than he thought about as a player. Uh, oh, my goodness. Um, 
and everyone, whether they're a sports fan or not, knows about Coach B because of that legendary SB speech back in the day. Um, you played against a lot of really tough players, one by the name of Michael Jordan. How did you feel about him while you were playing against him? Well, like I've told many people before, uh, I played against Michael Jordan. What you have seen is MJ, <laughs> yep. the great MJ. But I played against Michael Jordan, so he wasn't quite as good as he is now uh, when he played in the NBA. Right. Uh, and he was a lot younger when I played against him. And everybody knows I outscored him every time I play him. I kind of remind them of that every time I see him. But uh, you can see the talent. Uh, by the way, a little tidbit. When Michael Jordan in high school, he came to visit NC State, and I was his host. So I knew Michael when he was in high school. Wow. And he was a very shy and not as confident as he was when he came into the NBA. So uh, when I played against him, I didn't look at him at this great uh, MJ. I just played against Michael Jordan. What's ironic about that, they won the championship in 82. And that was my junior year and then our senior year. So the pressure was on NC State to win as well. So that's what made it so magical. Your rival, North Carolina, wins the championship in 82. And then we come back and win it in 83. That's what made it even more special. Oof. And magical is the key word there. So my final question, how does it feel to know that you are a major part of one of the greatest moments in sports history? When I grew up in Washington, D.C., I never, and going to a famous high school, DeMatha High School, I never imagined that uh, I would have experienced such great memories in, in, in sports. And I just have to thank my parents and relatives and teachers and mentors and coaches for, for helping me along the way in the opportunity. And that's why I'm writing this book about the shot heard around the world, how it went from the playground to the White House. I wanted to thank everybody because you can't get anywhere in life without your parents, your coaches, your teachers, your friends, your mentors, people helping you along the way. And I want to pay homage to them. So I thank them for all these great moments in sports that uh, continue to live on, right? When you do right. something this special, people will remember you for a long time. Well, I thank you so much for joining us. And I have a couple things to leave you with. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. And all of us real sports fans know that that was really a pass. Absolutely. And don't forget, March Madness, survive and advance. Survive and advance. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you.